where this is the last time we're talking about what God thinks. And basically this lesson is, what does God think? You know, you had your review, you had your party on Friday night, what God thinks about certain things. And the thing about it is, bottom line is, this is what God thinks. God thinks according to his word. He thinks according to his word. So this, this series has been, what does God think? So that is why, what are you doing with your shirt? Um, that is why you get in the word. That is why you come to church. That is why you pay attention to the word. So you find out what God thinks. So let's put our memory verse up one last time. This is our memory verse that you've memorized. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Well, this is the way God instructs you, but we have the mind of Christ. What if you don't have your Bible? See, there will be times that you don't have your Bible to look at. And so you have to know inside how God thinks. You have to know, hey, what would Jesus do in this situation? Because the Bible says that God, God thinks, and then he told Jesus what he thinks, and then Jesus walked out what God thinks. Do you understand? Like Jesus thought like God thought. Jesus acted like God thought. God acts. You see, so that's why we study about Jesus because, hey, guess what? Jesus walked and talked on this earth, hey, just like God told him to. He obeyed what God told him to do. He talked the way God talked, taught him to talk, just like you guys. You say things, you do things. Why? Because your parents taught you to say things and do things, right? Your parents taught you how to brush your teeth. Your parents taught you how to do what God does, how to say what God does. So it's important for you to understand that I want to be like Jesus. And the only way you can do that is to get in the word, to find out this tells you exactly what God thinks. Now, thank God for Pastor Faith, who's told you what God thinks about every little thing these past couple of months. But see, if you forget, you can always go to this and find out what God thinks about anything, any subject. This is our answer book. Say, this is our answer book. So I want you to know that God thinks like he wrote in this book. Because he told men what to write down. He says, take my thoughts and put them on paper and put them in a book so everybody can find out what I think about every subject. What God thinks about your parents what God thinks about homework, what God thinks about friends, what God thinks about all those things that y'all wrote on the list. See, the answer is in here. This is what God thinks. So I want you to know that the more you're in here, the more you're going to think like God thinks. And that's what we want to do. We want to think like God thinks. We don't want to think like the world thinks. The world thinks bad thoughts. Have you noticed that? You know, even you young ones, like the world is messed up, right? Like people in the world, they're really messed up now. They were messed up when I was a kid, and that was, you know, 50 years ago, uh, 60 years ago. It's been a long time. But they're really messed up now. The world is messed up. But they want you, listen, they want you to think like they think. And they're messed up. We don't want to be messed up. Turn to your neighbor and say, I don't want to be messed up. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants you to be messed up. So we have to think like God thinks. 
And when you come to church, when you read your Bible every day, and you're going to get a Bible reading probably on Wednesday or Sunday, you read your Bible every day so you can change your thinking. Some of you have stinking thinking. You know why you have stinking thinking? Because you've listened to a lot of worldly music. You've listened to a lot of uh, worldly things. You spent more time on YouTube and their garbage than you have in the Word. Well, what are you going to think like? You're going to think like the world, right? The more time you spend listening to the world, the more you're going to act like the world. The more time you spend reading and studying about Jesus, the better you're going to act. You're going to be a good kid. You're going to have a good life. This, listen to me, this is the best life. This is the best life. And as you get older, you're going to find out, especially especially when you look at people that were your friends and they went off. You know, Pastor Charity was telling a story about her friends in high school. And there were three of them. There were three of them. They were kind of like the, the, the group that they hung out together. She had two other friends besides herself. And then one, they came to church together. They did things together. They thought alike. They thought like this book said. But then one of them, she got off. She said, I really like you, but I'm going to go over here with these other kids. You know, and guess what? Her life didn't turn out good. Because she chose to go with kids who didn't think like this. Who thought like the world. And there's a bunch of pressure on you kids to think like the world instead of think like God. That's why you thank God for your parents. They may not know everything, but they, at least they got you here at church today. You know what I mean? And see, I would tell my girls, look, when you came out, you didn't have instructions tied to your butt. You know that? Have you ever seen a baby, a brand new baby? They don't have an instruction book tied to them, right? So your parents are doing the best they can with what they know. Thank God for parents who say, I don't know everything, just like Pastor Dean and I. We were older when we had kids, and I knew nothing about raising babies. Do you understand? Like, I didn't even know how to bathe Charity when she came out. I'm going, she's dirty. What do I do with this kid? So thank God my mom came up and said, this is how you bathe the baby. Oh, okay. You got you to gotta use soap. You got to, you know, that kind of thing. She taught me how to do some natural stuff, but the Holy Spirit said, I'll teach you how. I'll teach you how. Because if you've been around my girls, what is faith? Her personality is totally different from Pastor Charity. Do you understand? Like, oh, Lord. Like, what am I going to do with these kids? Like, I've never been around babies before. But the Holy Spirit taught me how to raise them. So cut your parents some slack when they make some mistakes because they're not perfect, but neither are you. But thank God you have parents who taught you how to clean your butt, who taught you how to brush your teeth. You know, Pastor Faith and Charity have no cavities. They have no cavities. They have no cavities. Why? Because I taught them how to brush their teeth. And see, sometimes they did like you do. I don't want to brush my teeth. I said, I don't care. You're going to brush your teeth because you don't want cavities all throughout your head where you go in the dentist and he goes, zzz, drills all and puts all that stuff like I had in my head, you see. So you're, thank God for your parents that are teaching you and at least have you here today. So, but we've got a daddy in heaven who's got a book 
that tells you, those of you who are old enough to read it, how to live the life. So you don't make mistakes that maybe your parents made, or you don't make your mistakes that your friends have made. Do you think Pastor Charity liked it when her friend left, left the group and went off and did some bad things and wasn't in the word anymore? She didn't like that. But look, listen, that girl chose. She chose to put her eyes on the world. She chose to put her eyes on boys. She chose to put her eyes on things other than God and his word. And her life didn't turn out good. You think, oh, I can do anything. No, you can't do anything. You got to do it according to the word. Now, let me tell you. Let me tell you, it's so important that you learn to think right, that you take all these messages that Pastor Faith and I have taught you, and you say, I'm going to put those into practice in my life. I'm going to do something that's, that's like this. I'm, well, f- people will make fun of you. Who cares? Who cares? Turn to your neighbor and say, who cares? Who cares? See, you have to decide. I'm going to think like God thinks. I'm going to I'm going to do what God tells me to do and I don't care if my friends don't like it. You know that other girl made fun of charity. She made fun of charity and her friend who decided not to do the worldly things. They made fun of her. Oh, you're just going to church all the time. You're just reading your Bible. You're not messing with boys. No, she didn't. She didn't do any of that stuff. She didn't do any of that stuff. And now she has a good life. Because she chose. See, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 30, 19, I set before you what? Life and death. Blessing and cursing. You choose. It's your choice. And see, listen. Even the littlest one in here makes choices every day. You make good choices or you make bad choices. But I pray that every one of you makes a good choice. Okay, let's watch this video about how Paul thinks. They are trying to escape. They travel out of Judea, through Samaria and Galilee, all the way to Syria. There is a stronghold of these disciples of Jesus living here in Damascus. I require a personal letter from you, the high priest, to the leaders of the synagogues in Damascus, asking their support that I may end this infection once and for all. These followers of Jesus disregard the law of Moses. You shall have the letter. You see, let me tell you the backstory on this. Saul, who later became known as Paul, had stinking thinking. Do you understand? He was thinking all wrong. He was thinking like religious people thought. And so consequently, when, when, when Jesus was walking on the earth, he was telling people about himself. But these people that he was hanging around with said, no, don't go with that group over there. They're called Christians. So, see, you may be hanging around with people who are saying, those Christians, those people that choose life, they're messed up. They're messed up. But see, they have the stinking thinking. And so what Saul did is he thought he was on the right road. Just like that girl who left charity when she was in middle school or high school, she thought she was going the right way. Bye, charity. Bye, bye, that other girl. Bye. We're going a different way. They thought they were doing the right thing. Saul thought he was doing the right thing, but guess what? He wasn't. He was doing the wrong thing. He was taking Christians and killing them, putting them in prison. He had stinking thinking. Say, Paul had stinking thinking. But Jesus appeared to him and said, Lick, listen, Paul, listen, Saul. He was Saul then. He said, listen, Saul, we got to change your thinking because you're all messed up. See, before you start getting in this book, and you may know adults, you may know 
older people who they're messed up. See, you'll be messed up without this. Do you understand? You'll be messed up. If you don't get this in here, you'll be messed up. And Saul didn't have this in here. He didn't. He had stinking thinking. He thought wrong. He didn't think like God thinks. And Jesus appeared to him just like we saw on the road to Damascus and talked to him and said, look, you got to have better thinking than this. And he sent Ananias to say, look, God's going to use you. God's going to use you, but you got to change your thinking. So listen, guys, I want you to understand that it's a progression. You have to change your thinking. You have to change your thinking. The more you hear God's word, the more you're going to change your thinking. And you have to think like God thinks. And so what did Saul do? Saul became Paul, and his whole, whole life changed. Do you understand? Ananias didn't want to go see him because he was a bad man. He had ba made bad choices. So when God said, Ananias, go talk to him, he said, you got the wrong guy. I don't want to go because he's got stinking thinking. But he was obedient to do what God said. And what did God do? He went to him and God worked through Ananias and changed him and he wrote most of the New Testament. That's a big change because God called him. God called him to change his life and live according to this. Everybody look at me. I want you to know something that God has called every one of you to live like this. Saul wasn't special. He was just like you. He was all messed up. He was going in the wrong direction. Some, some, some kids and some of the kids you know are going in the wrong direction. They may, they may come to church. They may even read their Bible. But they could get off like that friend of charities. They could get off. If you don't stick with this, you could get off. And I want to tell all you fifth graders that when you go to that other room, when you go to youth, when you graduate, there's going to be lots more opportunities for you to go a different path because there's more pressure. But when you keep thinking like God thinks, even you little ones know I'm going to go to church. I'm going to read my Bible. You get that down in your heart. I'm going to stick with God because I know that if I stick with God, I'm going to have a good life. If you just tell yourself that over and over again, this is a good life. Yes, people are going to make fun of you. They're going to laugh at you. They're going to mock you. They're going to say all kinds of things, but it doesn't matter. Because you're not here to please them. You're here to please God. Because God, listen to me. God has a plan for your life. Now, you may not be a preacher. You may not be a missionary. You may not go into the ministry. But whether you're a teacher or a banker or just a mom and just a dad, God has a plan for you. But the number one plan that he has for you is is to think like God thinks. You know, we've got successful men and women in business here. We've got successful people who are business people and successful people who are in ministry. But they are putting what God thinks first. And when you do that, when you put what God thinks first, you're going to have a good life. Say, I'm called. Say it like you mean it. I'm called. I'm called. Yeah, you know what you're called to do? You're called to think like God thinks. <laughs>